We're trying to honor our veterans at this time of the year in a unique way that usually doesn't occur in small airports like this. We were very fortunate that the EAA came in here and they decided to give us a chance. So the community has gotten behind us, as they always do. Our uh, sponsors have gotten behind us, and it really helps us, one, respect the people who need that respect or deserve that respect, and two, prove that this is the people's airport. We were lucky enough to have donations from many of the people in the community. We use those funds to provide rides for veterans from the Georgia War Veterans Home that would not have the opportunity to do something like this any other way. It's nice to be able to share it with a younger generation because they have no idea, especially when the veterans come out. It allows us to bring the veterans and the younger generation together and sometimes we'll have veterans come out and just park by one of the doors and just sit there and tell what they went through to anybody that goes by. When we do our rides, we spend a half hour and talk to the people that are coming with us and tell them about what the crew members experienced, the average age of a crew member, just the feelings that the people went through, trying to get everybody to understand, you know, what it's like so that when they get in it, they're not just going for a plane ride. Uh, if not for the greatest generation and what they did to step up to the plate, uh, we certainly would not be living in the world that we recognize today. It would be totally unrecognizable. And again, part of that is this B-17. That's what we do. We're all volunteers and we are here to keep the history of the greatest generation alive. We fly the airplane around telling their history and keeping that history alive. So, and that's why we're here. Keep it interactive. There's about 28 school kids coming out this afternoon. Hopefully they'll go away with a better appreciation of it. But more than anything, this airplane was built in, in the 1930s. At that time, you're really only 30 years removed from the Wright brothers. They had still had not figured out aerodynamics and control surfaces and how things should work together. There's nothing augmented or assisted for all the controls. Everything is a cable that runs out to each control surface. If it's windy or, or bouncy in the air, it's really hard to hang on to because it wants to go all over the place at once. In a town the size of Milledgeville, we'll go over the top. We'll go over and around and come back and just about everybody in town that comes out will say, you went right over our house. Because we're so big, no matter where we are, it looks like we went right over their house. We're like, that's what we planned. 